Good morning. It is Wednesday, November 14th. Can you believe that? We're almost halfway through the month. This is WGTV Today. I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. Good morning and thank you for joining us. And we are almost halfway through the month. We are. I mean, where does it go? Time flies. It does. It's almost like yesterday was yesterday. Almost like it was the 13th. Yeah, I mean, what's that all about? <laughs> hey, good morning to you there. Lots of stuff to talk about and to do. And a quick reminder, first of all, you know, the people in the Northeast and elsewhere in the country need blood. And I want to remind you that the next blood drive here in Wayne County, you know, there were two yesterday, That's but right. the next one is not until November 20th. And on the 20th at Carver Elementary School in Mount Olive, there will be a blood drive that starts at 2 p.m. That's going to be a busy day. It is. A November 20th. On the 20th. It is. <laughs> there is a lot going on. Like, what do you have? There is. Of course, that is Lights Up Downtown. Oh, boy. And on that evening, there's so many different things that you can do. You can start the evening at 5 o'clock p.m. We'll have a light up. Of course, the mayor will light up all the lights downtown Goldsboro, but we'll also have a ribbon cutting to officially unveil the Streetscape Project Phase wow. 1. Oh, boy. And for that one block of Center Street, we'll also have arts and crafts and hot chocolate and all kinds of goodies for you to enjoy and festive events will be taking place all night with the trolley <coughs> rides around downtown. Mm -hmm. and then you can hop on down to the Paramount Theater, hop, hop on mosey, the, whichever well, way you'd or like. Or mosey, yeah. <laughs> whichever way, I knew he'd pick up on that. Mop or hosey. <laughs> whichever yeah. way you'd like to get to the Paramount Theater, they're having North Carolina, uh, North Carolina Symphony will be there playing oh, Holiday yeah. Pops. Oh, they're great. That's right, and of course, you can also stay downtown, enjoy some dinner at one of our local restaurants, and keep it local. So that evening is full of things. It is, and, and it'll be nice and cool and seasonal, and so you have, uh, gee whiz, you have all kinds of fun to start with, with lights up, and then you have, of course, all kinds of food uh, with, the with dining downtown. downtown. And then you have great entertainment from the North Carolina Symphony at the Paramount Theater. And earlier that day, I believe, is the holiday, no, the holiday, the diabetes fair at the hospital. That's right. That diabetes uh, uh, event is going on mm -hmm. at Wayne Memorial Hospital. That begins at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It's a diabetes awareness health fair that uh, mm -hmm. where you'll be able to go. And if you have a concern about diabetes or if you have diabetes or someone in your family has diabetes, you can go to this. And they'd like you to register, although it's not necessary, but it would be nice if they knew you were coming. And you can register for this by calling 731-6299, 731-6299. Let them know you're coming. It's free of charge. You just go and get all this information about diabetes and about the latest treatments and supplies and, uh, and everything you want to know. There'll be some experts there, some doctors on hand to answer, answer your questions about diabetes. And uh, actually, there'll be some refreshments and some giveaways and prizes as well. So that's, right. that's on the 20th at 4 p.m. at Wayne Memorial Hospital. That's right. And don't forget, today is the Red and Ready Tour. Is that at today? Red Cross, that is today <coughs> okay. at 12 noon at the American Red Cross on right there on George Street. Right there at 600 North George Street near the railroad tracks on North George. And that's in that big brick building. It's just a beautiful building there. And uh, you, you go in at noon. Uh -huh, it's for one hour. One hour. And you learn so much about the Red Cross. You know, Red Cross is not only about giving blood. No. And it's not only about things that other people think the Red Cross is about. <laughs> it's about so many things. The Red Cross does so many things in the community. That's right. That's at 12 o'clock today. You can learn about it. That's right. And, you know, just a word of advice here. If you cannot give blood, if you've been out of the country in the past six months, or, mm -hmm. if, or if you have... Uh, a health issue where you cannot give blood, you or can you're still underweight. help. Or you're underweight. Or you're under 17 years of age. Mm -hmm. You can still help the Red Cross by being a volunteer. That's right. They need all the help they can get with the blood drives that we have throughout our yes. community and yeah. all the events that they hold. Yeah. They would welcome volunteers. They would want you to come and volunteer for anything you'd like to volunteer. And you don't have to give all your time. Give an hour a day or an hour a week or an hour a month and volunteer for the Red Cross. 735-7201, 735-7201. They need your help. Okay. Who's on the show on today? On the program today. Woo! We have a good one today if I can find it. I had it right here. Here we go. I have it right here. Today's the 14th. On the program today, we have HR, your HR department that's from right. the city Faye of Reeves. Goldsboro. Faye Reeves. That's right. It's going to be with us. Also today, my buddy Eddie Pitzer of the Wayne Regional Agricultural Fair. He's the new manager out there. He's going to do a great job. He's going to be with us. And we will have another segment from Jim Hennett. It's another segment of Tech, Tech Talk. Talk. <laughs> Tech Talk with Jim Hennett. And uh, that will be coming up a little later on this morning as well. All right? right. 
All right, shall we? I think we shall. Let's do it here. Let's go ahead and hear now from Faye Reeves in the City of Goldsboro HR Department. Good morning and welcome to WGTV Today. I'm Kim Best, your host, and today I am joined by Faye Reeves, who is the Director of Human Resources for the City of Goldsboro. Welcome, Faye. Thank you. Thanks. I am glad to have you here this morning, and I am interested in hearing about the HR department for the City of Goldsboro. I know it's a big job. Right. It's a big job. Tell me, what is the overall purpose and what are some of the different areas that you cover in the Human Resources Department? Okay. The overall purpose for the Human Resources Department is not only for our recruitment and selection for employment process, but we also handle employee relations. Um, we have a health and wellness program. We also have a safety program to ensure that we're complying with federal and state regulations. And we also provide professional development for our employees along with benefits and employee compensation. That's a long list. Yes. <laughs> you have a big job. Well, I know you were saying we have over 431 full-time staff right now and 49 part-time Yes. with the city. So tell me a little more about the customer service training that the city provides for our staff. We provided customer service training for as many of our employees as possible that we could uh, get. We knew that there would be some individuals with shift um, employment that we knew we wouldn't be able to get to, but we at least did over 300 employees um, for, that was our recent. Our recent for our customer service training. Uh, we try to inform, we remind our employees that we're all in the service of, of customer service for the city because we do work for the public and that's what we do. Although sometimes we may forget who our customers are, mm -hmm. but our customers are not only external but also internal when we talk about working with each other and having that great customer service atmosphere. And so that's what we try to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And not that our employees don't know that, but we just sometimes, as I all of us need reminding. Training. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and you said you said a mouthful there. We are, no matter what position we're in, we all are in customer service. Exactly. If you work for the city or yes. any municipality. Right. Fantastic. Well, and that'll be an ongoing process, I would assume. It say. will. Um, that's one of the things that we really do want to do is try and build on the training that we provide to our employees uh, from, from month to month or quarterly, try and get some type of training for them uh, to help them as well as to help the city and to provide the best service that we mm -hmm. can to our public. Absolutely. Well, tell me about safety, safety training and the safety requirements that we as um, employees for the city of Goldsboro are required to participate okay. in. Um, we do have monthly safety training for our employees. Uh, our senior uh, human resources analyst, Pamela Leach, she usually uh, puts out a calendar every month so that all employees be aware of what training is being offered. And not only that, but we also list our monthly health and wellness program that will be going on um, for that time frame. And so uh, what we do is we actually go to the departments mm -hmm. and provide the training to them because we know that it, it would be kind of difficult for all of them to come, you know, to come okay, to City so Hall. Okay, so you go to them. So we go to them. We do also have uh, three committees um, that we have built uh, of employees within the city. We have our safety committee. We also have our um, accident review committee and our personal injury committee. And, oh, this uh, is made up of city made employees. Up city, uh, made oh, up okay. of city employees. So they help make their own decisions. Right, right. And so, you know, we try and keep our uh, injuries, accidents and injuries as, as low as possible. But we know that with some job comes um, some type of safety. And so we try to make sure that our employees have the best training that they can get. Wonderful. Well, tell me more about this employee appreciation ceremony that you all hold, we all hold annually. Yeah. <laughs> um, we will be having our employee appreciation coming up in December for all of our employees who have been with the city in increments of five years. Uh, the one that we have that's been with us the longest this year will be 35-year employee. And so he, wow. he will be receiving recognition <laughs> also. And uh, they will receive certificates and gifts that they've selected. We usually give them a selection of gifts, which they, so they, they get make, to choose, they get what, to choose their what their oh, gift oh, is. Nice. And we provide them with the light breakfast in the mornings and a little networking in the mornings because we don't always get a chance to meet in the same location. Right, intermingle and, with and other staff. Right, and so we'll be having it at our Paramount Theater. And they've been so gracious to give us a little time slot there, <laughs> which is, which, uh, is one for us, a, a great venue for us to have oh, it. Oh, yes. And so we will be doing that, like I said, in mid-December for our employees. That's nice. It, it really is nice to recognize people and their efforts. Yes. And the time that they've spent working with any job. 
Right. But um, well, tell me also about you said that you work with and, and you supervise an occupational health nurse. Yes. So tell me about her position and and what the need is for that. Right. That position has been with the city probably since the early 80s, and it's really helped us out a lot. Um, not only does do we have the the monthly um, health and wellness program, but also she does our flu vaccinations. Uh, she does lunch and learn sometime for us. Uh, she invites you know people to come in and, and do sessions for us, which is really great. And uh, also any minor accidents, and she also handles our workers' compensation, which okay. uh, sometimes gets to be a, a bit much, but uh, she takes it in stride. So we're really happy to have Cindy with us. Oh, yeah. And I, like I said, I know she does her spots every she month. She does. So. She comes on once a month and does her wellness Yeah, spot. so she tried to give me my little um, speech today. <laughs> but, uh, but, Your uh, prep speech. Yes, huh? my prep speech. But we're very fortunate to have someone on site um, mm -hmm. to help us with our health and wellness and also any minor uh, accidents and, in and injuries that we may have. So she tries to keep the staff as well as possible, number one, so they can be productive and come to work, but also right. so they don't, you know, make their family sick and Absolutely. carry things home and, and create mm -hmm. other issues within our community. Yes. Wonderful. Well, the last thing we haven't touched on is benefits. Okay. Who handles that and, and how do you, with all these employees working for the city of Goldsboro, how do you all keep that under control? <laughs> our, uh, the main staff member that handles that is Valores Allen. She's our benefits rep and uh, she oversees all of our benefits for the city. And so we try to make sure that even if she's not there to assist the customer, there's someone in that office who can also assist them because I never want anyone to walk away from the office without receiving assistance. That's our main goal. And so she does a good job at getting, um, getting the word out to us on our benefits and making sure that we're providing the right information about our benefits to our employees. And that lessens the worry that they have. Right. You know, if, as long as we have everything in order like we're supposed to do for their benefits, then they can concentrate on their job. Absolutely. Now tell me where, you're, where the office or that department is located in the city. We're located uh, at 214 North Center Street, which is in the old section of City the Hall. Historic City the Hall. Historic City Hall. We're on the first floor, and we're open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, those individuals who would like to come in and pick up applications or job postings are more than welcome to do so. Uh, we do take walk-ins all day from 8 to 5, and also um, we have, uh, you can mail your applications in also. Uh, you can download the application from, our, of course, our website, mm -hmm. uh, right. and if you click on the bottom link that says Jobs, it'll take you directly to the HR page. And you can okay. also review our postings. We also try to keep a uh, position status update for any uh, current and previous positions that we've had within the last three months. So okay, the so individuals you can see where know. you are right. in, that, in that deciding. Right, and so we exactly. try and keep that update. And we also have a job hotline, too. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. You've got a mighty big job, thank but you do a great job. Thank you We so appreciate much. what you do, and uh, thank you for informing us on what the Human Resources Department for the City of Goldsboro <laughs> does. Good job. Thank you. I hope you've learned more about what's happening within the city of Goldsboro. Uh, we thank Faye for being here and representing her department and continuing to do their good job and, and keeping us well and keeping us knowing how much we are appreciated through the city of Goldsboro. If you have other questions or concerns or if you're interested in a job position with the city of Goldsboro, go to goldsboronc.gov under Human Resources Department over on the left-hand side of our website and you can find out additional details and what openings are available with the city. We thank you and we hope you've learned more about what's happening in your community. Back on WGTV today, that was interesting. Yes. The Human Resources Department, City of Goldsboro, Faye's doing a great job. She's doing a great job and, and she's so passionate about what she does and she has a great staff and, and they really are on top of things. So and we're, we're yeah. lucky and blessed to have somebody like Faye. All right, coming up, uh, the 4-H, listen to this now, the 4-H Favorite Food Show. Oh, oh yeah. boy. The Favorite Food Show will be November 29th, that's this year <laughs> and this month. <laughs> The 29th, and it says that you sh if you're between the ages of 5 and 18, 5 and 18, bring your favorite dish and your table setting and your knowledge of your favorite food. You can call Sharon Sutton to find out more about this. The 4-H Favorite Food Show. And Sharon's telephone number, 919, of course, 731-1527. 731-1527. It's going to be on the 29th from 7 till 8 p.m. in Goldsboro, uh, I presume at the Wayne Center on George and Chestnut.
But uh, it's the 29th, 7 to 8 p.m. Call Sharon Sutton to find out more about the 4-H favorite food show, 731-1527. And Wayne, we'd like to share that there is a support group here locally in our community. It's called Share Pregnancy and Infant Loss Support Group. And they meet on Thursday, November the 15th at 6.30 p.m. at the Brick Village. Uh, it's called it's Through Life Solutions Counseling. That's at 501 Pake Town Road, Suite 17, right here in Goldsboro. It's a free support group formed by women who have suffered pregnancy or infant loss. There's no registration required. Uh, if you're interested in finding out more about this support group, you can call Melissa at 919-922-2597. That's Melissa Harrell, um, and she's with Life Solutions Counseling. Okay. If you are a history buff, if you enjoy things about history, you know that this is the 150th anniversary of part of the Civil War. And the 150th anniversary this year would be a celebration or observing, not a celebration, but observing 1862 uh, when we, uh, of course, uh, encountered and in, and in uh, uh, the Battle of Goldsboro Bridge That's in right. December of 1862. And you know, that reenactment's coming up here next month. Ooh. Yeah, I know, and uh, and Barbara was right. It's, I believe, the 15th. Is it? I believe it is. It's somewhere near the middle of the month of December. Well, we'll share that information as we get it. Sure we will, but it's also the Battle of Fredericksburg as well. That's uh, that's all coming up. The Battle of Fredericksburg and the Goldsboro Bridge Battle uh, will be addressed, uh, be a topic of discussion by Randy Sauls, who's an area historian, and that's coming up uh, December 11th, and that will be uh, at 7 o'clock at Moffitt Auditorium at Wayne Community College at 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. on December 11th. Admission is free. It doesn't cost anything. And if anybody knows anything about anything, it's Randy Sauls. He knows <laughs> all about anything you want to know about the Civil if War. It's history. He knows. He knows. He's the man. He and Danny Davis are just brilliant in that regard. Yes. But uh, uh, that's coming up December 11th, 7 o'clock at Moffitt Auditorium at Wayne Community College, free of charge. Well, the Stony Creek Park Committee is meeting coming up, Wayne, Thursday, November the 15th at 1 p.m. They'll meet in the Mayor's Conference Room mm -hmm. in City Hall. That is, like I said, Thursday, November the 15th, and they meet on a monthly basis to discuss Stony Creek and what changes they want to make and how they want to move forward with that group. So if well, you're interested you in participating, you can show up Thursday, November the 15th, hey. 1 p.m., Mayor's Conference Room. There you go. Christmas parades, again, I want to remind you, uh, coming up, there's a uh, Christmas parade on the 17th. Today is the 14th, so that would be this week. <laughs> okay, <coughs> I lose track of time. Anyway, uh, the uh, Seven Springs Christmas Parade this week in Seven Springs. That's right. All right, and that's why they call it the Seven Springs <laughs> Christmas Parade. There's also three blood, three blood drives, three Christmas parades on oh, that's a busy day, December Saturday. 1st. Yeah, Saturday, December 1st in Mount Olive, Fremont, and Goldsboro. Mount Olive, 10 o'clock, Fremont, 1 o'clock, Goldsboro, 4 p.m. on Saturday, December 1st. The very next day in Pikeville at 3 o'clock. And then a week after that on De uh, Sunday, December 9th, Eureka at 3 p.m. as well. Long okay. list of Christmas parades. I know. Well, it's that time of year. It is. Ho, ho, it ho. Is. There you go. Keeps us in the Christmas spirit. Indeed it does. Well, coming up. That's right. I want to be talking to Eddie Pitzer up next on WGTV. Stay tuned. He's the new manager of the Wayne Regional Agricultural Fair. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to meet and uh, enjoy Eddie because he's just a nice yeah, guy. Yeah, find out a little bit of where he's been and where, where, what his work experience is. Yeah, that's next on WGTV Today. Today we're here with Eddie Pitzer. My friend Eddie Pitzer has, uh, gee, Eddie, I've known you a number of years, I guess. I remember when you were out at the out at the Cherry Farms out that's, there. That's correct, Wayne. And yep. uh, Eddie is the is the manager, uh, chief cook, bottle washer, and the guy <laughs> does a little bit of everything out of the Wayne Regional Agricultural Fair. I'm so glad you're with us, Wayne. I'm glad to be here today, and I appreciate you asking me to come. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Now. Uh, first of all, uh, let's remind folks about who you are. Tell me about okay. Eddie Pitzer. Well, Wayne, I've been in uh, Wayne County for a little over 34 years. I um, started and came to Wayne County uh, as uh, assistant superintendent of the Cherry Research Farm. Right. Yep. Yeah, I actually worked out there with the Department of Agriculture for 34 years. Started wow. as the assistant superintendent. Uh, later was promoted to the superintendent of the research station and then later went up to Raleigh and served as the director of the research stations 
in North Carolina, we're fortunate we've got 18 research stations across the state, so it gave me a good chance to get across the state and see a lot of the variety that we have here in North Carolina. And you did a wonderful job in that position, and uh, so needless to say, agriculture is your background and your passion. It is. It, it is. is. I grew up as a youth working in the tobacco field, as a lot of us did. So A lot of us did. Yes. We got that experience, and what a good experience to have. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, so. It was hard work. Yeah, but it but, but it, it taught us work. a lot. It taught us a lot. It That's us exactly a lot. right. It sure did. Well, Eddie, you were the uh, uh, you came back to Wayne County. You left the, the yep. position in Raleigh. Yep. Came back to Wayne County, and now you how in the world were you roped in? I mean, how were you convinced <laughs> into the <laughs> into becoming this uh, the new manager out of the fair? Well, Wayne, you know, I go back I, ever since I've been with the uh, Cherry Research Farm. I started on the board of directors with the Wayne County Livestock Development Association. Right. One of the uh, first jobs I had was to serve with, uh, as a dairy chairman of the dairy committee when there was such a thing as a dairy committee on the Livestock Association. That got me on the board back in, I think, 1987. Wow. So, so I've been on the board for almost 25 years yeah. as a board member. And then in 1990, I took over as secretary treasurer so I've been doing that for quite a few years also. So been involved kind of behind the scenes a little bit with what goes on, but, but active into the fair. So you're and not new. You haven't been just thrown into it. You, you, no. I know no. that you, you've been yeah. around the, our Wayne Regional Agricultural Fair, which, by the way, you mentioned the Wayne County Livestock Association. Yeah. That's a great organization. Well, as you know, the Wayne County Livestock Development Association is the owner and operator of the Wayne County Fair. And of course, we have a lot of functions through the Livestock Association, right. one being the fair, and that's our primary fundraiser. But also we have the Junior Livestock Show and Sale that's going to be right. coming up 1st of April, April 3rd and 4th. That's right. You know, and that, that's a good opportunity. We have about 60 youth last year that participated in that program. Oh, a good right. learning experience yes. for them. Oh, yeah. Introduce them to livestock and the management of it right. and the exhibition of it and the marketing of it. So that's a good program. Plus, the uh, Livestock Association does a lot as far as uh, scholarships. I don't know if you noticed, but last year we awarded six scholarships uh, to uh, six students, seniors here in Wayne County, uh, a little over 14,000. Wow. And, and we were looking back the other day, and uh, President Shiver had counted back, probably over 100 kids have benefited from our scholarship program over these years. That's so, so that's... You know, and that's one thing that our board of directors with the Livestock Association has been so progressive and forward thinking is, is that they've, they've looked out for the youth in our county, plus they've really stood behind the fair to make it a better fair. You see some of the improvements yeah. we've had over oh, yes. the years. Quite, oh, a bit yeah. of, quite a bit of our resources go right back into improving that fair, which is good forward thinking on their part. It is a lot of improvements over the last, uh, well, I've seen improvements every year. Yeah. And I don't know how you could get any better than what it is right now. Well, I know you're going to work on it. We're going to keep trying. <laughs> you know, we had some great improvements with the paving. Yeah. And we finished that up. And this year we put in new uh, parking lot lights. That's right. Well, that was a big improvement. That of course, was. we got started with it. We've got another phase to that. Maybe we, you know, can light it up a little more out there even. But, but uh, always looking for new and better things to do. Mm -hmm. Eddie, that's great. And congratulations on uh, this past year, the, the former manager out there. Mm -hmm. What was his name again? <laughs> Uh, Milton Ingram. Oh, you yeah, know oh Milton. yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah, I've known Milton many years. He's yep. a wonderful guy. Yeah. Uh, and I'm wondering how are you going to keep him? How are you going to keep him away? Is what I'm wondering. Well, <laughs> you know, no. you take advantage of good resources, <laughs> yes, Wayne. Yes, you do. You know, and Milton has left a great foundation to build on out there. He truly has. He surely has. When you look at where we've come over the years, I mean, he gets a lot of credit for for being behind that, and and he eats, sleeps, and drinks fair. That indeed he does. does, you know, and he's done a great job with it. And I'm just looking forward to being able to continue on from what he has done. Well, and I know you will. Mm -hmm. uh, now you have, uh, in a way, uh, you have a background in uh -huh. fair as you were growing up. Oh, that's true. That's true. My did my dad did manage the North Carolina State Fair in Raleigh. In Raleigh, How about sure that? did. Out of Dorton mm -hmm. Arena. Well, the whole the whole the old fairgrounds. The whole fairgrounds yeah. out there. So, and uh, that was just about the time I was in. Junior high and high school, he was, you know, he was managing the fair, and I spent a lot of time out there, as you can imagine, a young man growing up. It's a fairgrounds is an awful attractive place to be. It is. Yeah. It is. Now, tell me about uh, how we did uh, this past year, as Milton was retiring, and he's yep. going on to the old fishing hole here. Yeah. So, uh, how did we do this past year? 
Well, you know, we started off pretty good. We had that Saturday where we had rain. And, you rain, know, yeah. when you, uh, weekends are our big days. And so Saturday hurt us a little bit. But we, throughout the week, we started to gain a little ground on mm -hmm. it. We were a little bit behind by the time the week was over. But we still, overall, we had a good, successful fair. I think by the end of the, uh, at, uh, by the end of the the, uh, the second week there, oh yeah, uh, it's uh, it, it was it, it we was were really, gaining ground. It was wide open. It was wide yeah, open. Man, yeah, man, I'm telling you. Yep. You know, if we have anybody who's new to the Wayne County area, and you have heard about, I'm sure, but you mm -hmm. have never been to the Wayne Regional Agricultural Fair, make plans right now to go next year because you will have a ball. Yep. It's one of the best fairs. If not, I think it's the best fair in the state, if not the southeast. Oh, I, I know it's the best. Yep. It is. Well, yep. you have a you have yep. a wall full of, of awards to prove That's right. that it's the best in the state. They're constantly winning the Image Award, which makes it, the, which mm -hmm. is the, uh, an award for the best fair in the fair. state. Yep. So, uh, so Eddie... You walk into the uh, to the position of uh, new fair manager here. Mm -hmm. Do you have have you planned on how you uh, are going to uh, uh, change anything, or have you thought about what's going to be new, or are you going to pretty much stick with the traditional? Uh, well, as I said earlier, Wayne, you know we got a we got a good program that we've had. It's worked over the years. Mm -hmm. It's how we're going to kind of start to look at it and and work with it and continue to build on it. Right and. Um, you know, involvement. I'm going to look at what people that want to be involved with it and take in their suggestions and see what they would like to do different. You know, maybe they'd like to tweak some areas they work. Just like, you know, you've been a director of the Spelling Bee for years right. and years. Right. You know, get some input from you. Is there things that we need to do a little differently? I don't think we need to go in and do drastic changes. There's no, we've got a good program. Let's you stick got a winning program. Let's stick with it. Let's yeah. build on it. Yeah. And, but, but involvement's going to be important and customer conveniences and services. Yeah. You know, we are, we'll start looking, we're already looking right now at what we're going to have for entertainment next year. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, you, you start right after the... Uh, well, the actually, we booked entertainment for 2013 a year ago. Oh, did? Yeah. <laughs> uh, good entertainment, good oh, family yeah. entertainment. Right. You know, you have to get out. If you're going to get it, you've got to get in early to be able to make sure you can yeah. secure it because they're in demand. That's so. Right. So we'll be going this to the International Association of Fairs and Exposition at the end of November, and we'll be looking at entertainment not only for 2013, but even into 2014, wow. so that we can get that good quality family entertainment. Right, and family it's always great entertainment. Mm -hmm. And yep. of course, you can't beat Powers. Oh, listen, we've- They are uh, the best. Yes, yeah. Powers Midway. Powers, uh, yes, they are one of the best Midways. And you know, they're the ones that service the North Carolina State Fair now. That's right, they so, go straight from here to there. And they're a family operation. Yeah. That's what's so nice about it. It's a nice, clean family operation. The rides they're, are safe and they're yep. clean and they're yep. just good people to deal with. They are excellent people. And he's based right here out in North Carolina. I know. What else, you know? You can't get it, any better yeah, than that. Yeah, that's, that's, and it, He's got a nice shop down in Whiteville. They bring equipment in throughout the winter and they re go through it, refurbish it. If you'll notice, it's always clean, it's always painted, the lights always work. Mm -hmm. He's just a top-notch operation. It is that. Safety-wise, uh, he's got one of the cleanest records in there and that's what we're concerned about. You know, when we have people come to the fair, we want them to have a good time mm -hmm. in a good environment, a safe environment. Safe environment. Yeah. I also know that you have, uh, you have uh, wash stations, hand washing stations yes. set up out there. Yeah. The uh, the pathways the, between the buildings are all paved. Yeah, it's clean. Yeah, it's safe. Yeah, and you just uh, it's just an amazing event. Yeah, well, it's you know it's about having customers come and be happy yeah. and enjoy their visit. Yeah, and that's what uh, you know you got to look at these customer conveniences, and that's what we'll be doing after the first of the year. We'll be putting together kind of a a review of what happened this year. Where do we need to what do we need to work on? You know. Where do we need to build on for the next years? Man, that's great. Mm -hmm. Our guest uh, has been Eddie Pitzer, the manager of the Wayne Regional Agricultural Fair, which is owned and operated by the Wayne County Livestock Development Association. And Eddie, it's always great to have you in the studio with us. Glad and I hope to be you here. Come back soon. I look forward to it, Wayne. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm Wayne Alley for WG TV. We are. We're back at WGTV today, old boy. He's a little excited. Well, no, more than yeah, yeah. Well, it's Christmas time. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. You know, holidays, Thanksgiving. Love this time of year. And speaking of holidays yes. and this time of year, yes, we would like to hear about your holiday traditions. Yeah. What do you do? Why do you do it? How long has your family done these traditions? 
We want to hear about it. If you have traditions that you'd like to share with us, you can email them to WGTV at WayneGov.com and we'll share them on the show. That's right. Holiday traditions. Also, pictures of holiday lights throughout the community. If you drive by a home or if it's your home that once you light it up for Christmas and you want to share what you've done, take a picture and email it to us. We'll share it on the show. That's so much fun. That's going to be a lot of fun. Traditions. I'm looking forward to that. Me too. And besides that, now, just a word of caution. If you are deciding that you're driving down the street and you see somebody's house and you like the lights on their house, get their permission before you take the picture of that house because <laughs> they might want to come out and flatten your tires or something. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, they want to be, you know, well. Uh, I <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. How about... Okay. <laughs> How about, <laughs> this is the fifth annual Christmas tree lighting and flotilla at the cliffs of the new state oh, yeah. park. It'll be taking place Friday, December 7th at 6 p.m. A flotilla is a light, is a group of fully lit decorated boats that will circle the Christmas tree in the lake at the park before the Christmas tree is lit. It's a beautiful, pristine experience. And if you'd like to participate in that, you can call 919-778-6234 to sign up. Uh, paddle boats and canoes are available at the state park for you to decorate. And let's see, you must be 16 years or older if you would like to participate in this. Mm -hmm. But to get other information, just feel free to call the state park at Cliffs of the Noose. Paddle boats? That's right, fifth annual, Wow. Friday, December 7th. There's lots of other activities that take place on that evening as yeah. well. There's a lot of stuff going mm -hmm. on. That's, that's going to be that's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, today's the 14th. Uh, don't forget, uh, this uh, Saturday at the Arts Council of Wayne County, they're going to have a Charlie Brown Christmas. That's right. Uh, thanks, I'm sorry, Charlie Brown Thanksgiving party. <laughs> Christmas not yet. <laughs> well, coming up. Charlie Brown Thanksgiving party, that's coming up. There'll be a lot of things to uh, munch on, lots of food stuffs, uh, jelly beans, uh, buttered toast, mm -hmm. uh, pretzels, all kinds of fun. Plus, uh, children will enjoy making a beautiful Thanksgiving hanging decoration and a festive turkey. That's at the Arts Council coming up this Saturday from 10 a.m. until 12 o'clock noon. And it's just a great way to spend your Saturday morning before Thanksgiving. Ages 5 to 10, the cost is 5, uh, make that $10 per person, 5 to 10 years of age, $10 per child. And uh, for information or to, or to go ahead and register, you can go ahead and do that by calling the Arts Council at 736-3300, 736-3300. Don't forget, Jingle in the Park is taking place. Yay. Coming up soon, <laughs> Friday, December the 7th and Saturday, December the 8th at Herman Park Center from 4 until 8 p.m. Come on out. Look at all the beautiful lights when they light up the entire park. Oh, yeah. oh they'll have activities, music, Santa, of course, the miniature Kiwanis train. Oh, Everything yeah. will be lit Ooh. up. It is absolutely beautiful once they turn those lights on at Herman Park. Come out and enjoy the festivities. It is going to be beautiful. That's so much fun. There's so much going on in our community, Wayne. I know there is. There is. Today is November 14th, almost the middle of the month. It's Loosen Up, Lighten Up Day. And time to remind <laughs> everyone of the benefits of joy and laughter. Interesting. I uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> it's also, believe it or not, National American National Teddy Bear Day. Legend says that uh, this is the day back when Teddy Roosevelt spared the life of a bear cub. You know, that's the legend mm -hmm. of Smokey Bear anyway. When he uh, spared the life of a bear cub while on the 1902 big game hunt in Mississippi. I don't know how true that story is. I mean, I know, he, you know, he liked to, he was a big hunter and used to go on all these big game hunts and all that. But I don't know who would want to shoot a bear cub anyway. I mean, that's not, that's not sport. No, it's not. Well, we won't even go there because... We just won't even go there. But anyway, I don't think that uh, the whole story is quite true. It's probably been embellished to some point. But anyway, political cartoonist Clifford Berryman drew the incident and the teddy bear was born. Teddy bear. And then, uh, and then there you go. That's not Smokey Bear. That's Teddy Bear. Teddy Bear. The story of the teddy bear. <laughs> That's right. The story of the teddy bear. story of the teddy bear, yes. Well, Wayne, we are now spotlighting youth in our community that excel and do great things. That's good. If they are, if you know a child who is excelling in one of four areas, academics, community service, athletics, or the arts, and they're also between the ages of 6 and 18, mm -hmm. we want instructors to email that information to us. You can find an application on the city or the county's website about the details so you can spotlight local youth. 
And Wayne, what is the county's website? The county's website is waynegov.com. And the city's is goldsboronc.gov. Both websites have an area that says WGTV. If you click on that, you'll find the application to fill out about who you can send information in on. That's exactly right. Also, it's not only for public schools. This is also private schools and, and homeschoolers home schools as well. That's right. So All right. Kids Spotlight, youth in our community, showcasing great things that are you know, youth are doing locally. So you could submit an application on waynegov.com or goldsboronc.gov. There you go. All right. The, uh, ooh, today that? is, uh, well, uh, I was thinking birthdays, okay, and today uh -huh. is Condoleezza Rice's birthday. Really? She is 58 years old, and she is a big sports fan. She oh. loves sports. Condoleezza Rice. In fact, she wanted to be a coach. What kind she, of coach? Uh, coach, coach, you know. Basketball? Football? Football. Uh, yeah, right. You want to be a football <laughs> coach. Anyway, uh, today is also Kurt Schilling's birthday. He's 46, and Bonnie Prince Charlie. Prince Charles is 64 years today. Prince Charles is? Yes, yes, he is. I got a little confused about what you said I know, before, Bonnie right? Prince Charles, okay. I, well, they Prince Charles. Prince Charles. Is 46. Chuck, right, is uh, 64. <laughs> you <laughs> confused me. He is still talking about Prince Charles. <laughs> oh yeah, well, what am I talking about? <laughs> I don't know. If he, if, what? Nothing, okay. nothing. He's 64 today, <laughs> somebody is. All right, all right. Also, we're gonna go on to <laughs> the, the next segment, uh, as if I knew what I was talking yes, about. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. What is that? Today, the next segment is, <laughs> what day is it? It's still Wednesday, <laughs> all day long. It is. Woo. All right. Oh, yeah, Jim Hennett's up next. Yes, he is. Jim Hennett is in the studio with us again this morning. I appreciate you being with us, Jim. Hope you're doing well. Glad to be here, Wayne. Today I want to talk about the new Windows 8 operating okay. system. I have heard so many stories about how it's going to be confusing, how it's going to be problematic, how it's, going, how it's entirely new. And I've even heard some people say, well, now this is only so that Windows or Microsoft can, uh, can sell more uh, training programs. Uh, wh what's your take on the new Windows 8 operating system? Well, I haven't actually seen it face to face because it just came out. Uh, I, I could have got a beta version, but I'm busy with doing other stuff. I, so yeah. I, and, and as I told you off camera, I, I try to stay off of the bleeding edge of technology. The bleeding edge, I <laughs> so, like that. Um, I, I like to go with more <laughs> of the, um, uh, you know, after something comes out and uh, the first people that love to get on that bleeding mm -hmm. edge, they've already got all the little kinks and problems out, and then I'll get on it after that. Right. Uh, Windows 8 is, uh, is out, you can actually buy it. Microsoft has it now. If you want to order the box, we actually have a physical box that they ship to you, $70, oh. $70 for the upgrade. For the upgrade. For the upgrade. So you if have to you're have running 7 now, you can upgrade Well, if you're running uh, Windows 7, or for if you're really dumb and running Windows Vista, I don't know why anybody <laughs> be running Windows Vista. <laughs> Now, there may be somebody <laughs> running, and we love you. We Windows love you, Vista but, we, users, but yeah. we apologize for yeah. you having that. I'm yeah, sorry about sorry that. About that. Uh, our Windows XP with Service Pack 3, any of those, okay. you can actually upgrade uh, with this upgrade package to, to Windows 8. Right. Uh, okay. Now, I don't know if I had a Windows XP machine, if I would try to put Windows 8 on it. I was going to say that. <laughs> I mean, why would you want to do that? XP is a great uh, It is. A great and, and actually, it, right now, it is actually the, still the most popular operating system out there. There's more copies of Windows XP running than there are Windows Vista 7. Okay. So, uh, so XP is still the number one. That's changing. 7's mm -hmm. getting ready to take over that. And of course, now 8 is out. Right. Um, anyway, but it's $70 if you want them to ship you a box mm -hmm. with, uh, with Windows 8, uh, and then if you want, for the upgrade, and if you want to just download it, you can go to the website for $40, you can, you can just download it Great. And, and do the upgrade. So right. it's available, uh, and they have that on their webpage at Microsoft.com right now. Okay. Uh, of course, there are other vendors you can buy it, and I would actually recommend to people they go to other places to shop around <laughs> to find a possibly cheaper price. You you know, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, Windows 8 is actually built upon Windows 7. They, they essentially took the technology change they came out with 7, which was pretty substantial. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 7, when it came out, was known as Vista Done Right. Because oh. Vista was such a fiasco. And there uh, were a lot of problems. A lot of problems with Vista. With Vista. Yeah. Uh, if you were taking Vista out of the box and you were just going to be doing, uh, you know, checking your email and surfing the web, mm -hmm. you're probably okay. Yeah. You probably wouldn't notice the difference. But if you loaded any software on there, 
that was not part of the package, you possibly would have a lot of trouble with it. A lot it. of compatibility problems. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, going from XP uh, 7, they, they corrected a lot of that. Yeah. They fixed a lot of those problems. Uh, I actually have software that we wrote uh, years ago, because we do, our company writes uh, software, and we wrote it back when Windows 2000 was the operating system right. to have. And that software will still run on Windows 7. We had trouble on Vista, but it will run on 7. So there are some improvements there. Okay. But 8 is built upon 7. Uh, a lot of, they've added some new features to it. Uh, a lot of things interfacing with the internet. Uh, I'll give you an example of one that supposedly that you can sit down to any computer. If you walk up to somebody's desk or whatever, and they have Windows 8 running, mm -hmm. and you want to log in to check your account, you can actually sit down at their computer and log in. You can't get to their computer, to their information on their computer, but you can connect through their computer to the internet. And communicate immediately. Like communicate on the computer on, to computer. On, on what is known as the cloud. The, and, oh yeah, okay. And the cloud, by the way, is just another term that somebody came up with to make themselves look good, I think. <laughs> You know, it's not the. It's a virtual technology. Virtual technology, yeah. and uh, so that's that's what what you can do now. And uh, but a, new, a lot of new apps and things, a lot of a lot of interfacing with the cloud, the cloud. Uh, so that it, your documents and your information is actually stored somewhere and hopefully securely in a remote location. Yeah. So I that you can get it on your smartphone, you can get it on your your computer. You can go to the library and pull it up there, mm. uh, and that's the idea. And Windows 8 is build, building upon that thinking, that, that philosophy. And that, that virtual technology is has been around for a while, but mm -hmm. it is continuing to be be used in more ways now. Mm -hmm. yes. And more people are finding out about it and mm -hmm. logging on to it or using it. Yes. I'm still uncomfortable with it. I, I'm careful what I put on there. Yeah. Um, I take the idea that anything I put on there can be seen by somebody else. That's right. And uh, so, so don't. Well, that's always been the case. Yeah. Uh, never, actually. never put, never put anything anywhere you don't want somebody else to that's see. Right. Now, you know, he just said something very important here. Never put anything anywhere that you wouldn't want someone else to see. Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, regardless of what operating system you're using. That's right. Because it possibly could be seen by somebody else. And in fact, it could be monitored mm -hmm. by someone else. Yes. And you don't want that to happen if you're putting something on the, on the internet or an email that you wouldn't want someone to see. Yeah. Now the other thing with Windows 8 is the fact that they're they're produ producing this to run on tablets. Some of the new tablets that are coming yeah. out. Okay. Um, and there's one tablet. I'm not sure which company actually came out with it first. I think Dell has one. Mm -hmm. uh, HP has one. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a computer that looks like a notebook computer, but you can flip the screen around and lay it down flat against the keyboard. Oh. And it becomes a tablet. Ah. And so it's dealing with yes, touchscreen uh, technologies, yeah. and Windows 8 is really pushing that side of things as well. Yeah. So. Do you feel uh, Windows 8 uh, had the tablet in mind when they yes. when they designed this? Oh yes. When they designed it, uh, it's it's a different format or a different configuration of of uh, desktop. It's entirely different it, from what we're accustomed to seeing. It, it is and it isn't. There are actually aspects of it that are the same. Um, mm -hmm. and they are actually, and I've seen this also in the Android system, which we can get to in just a minute. But the um, the Android operating system and also iOS, they're they're kind of migrating toward a, a colorful block layout, where yeah. things are uh, instead of having a desktop with icons on it, we mm -hmm. actually have blocks of colors, and each block is what we want to go to. I had something like that when I was four years old. Yes, right? of course it wasn't a computer. Probably wood blocks, wasn't sure, it? Wood blocks. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind. Of they're trying to make it simple, I guess, or yeah. but it's entirely different. A mm -hmm. different look, different configuration. A little different look and configuration, yeah. but essentially it will run the same software uh, as 7. Mm -hmm. So anything that will run on 7, Microsoft says, will run on 8. Okay. They say that. They uh, say that. Yeah. Well, and this, we'll, we'll and this is all new. Dell just started shipping Windows 8 machines uh, about two weeks ago. Yeah. And okay. uh, we got the notice on that. We can, we can get either Windows 7 or we can get Windows 8. We have a choice. Uh, are they still offering XP at a at a premium? You most of them have dropped it now. Really? Uh, but most, uh, we'll give you an example. Um, uh, I had a computer that I bought when I bought Vista, that was designed for Vista, and I got it in, and very quickly I saw that was not going to work. <laughs> uh, so I reached over. It was a Dell a Dell yeah. computer, right? And uh, uh, which is a personal preference of mine. Not that I'm saying anybody has to go buy that, right. but uh, I actually took my Dell uh, Windows XP disk and bought me a new hard drive and put in this brand new laptop and right. notebook computer. Right. Slid the new hard drive in there, put the the uh, Windows XP CD in there, and loaded Windows XP on there. And that's what I use on that computer now. Yeah. The, the Vista disk Smart. is set off to the side. Smart. So. Okay. 
All right, we only have a few minutes left. Let's mm -hmm. talk about the, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, one of the systems. Yeah, and, the Android. Android and, system, yeah. yes. Uh, explain, if you would, uh, Android and the difference between that and the other. Well, Android came out, was actually a, a Google's the one that's really pushing Android. Yeah. Uh, but there were actually about 80 different companies that went together to develop this uh, Android design. And the idea behind it was mostly the phone companies, Google was involved with it and several other companies, and they came up uh, with a Linux-based system. Which, uh, is, which is, Linux is good. Linux is good. Linux, uh, is, good. Linux is actually a derivative of Unix, and it's been around for many years, yeah. but it's a very popular operating system. A lot of the uh, email servers and web servers and so forth run on the Unix or Linux right. uh, platform. Uh, but they actually came out, um, Google started this back in 2005, and I think it was 2007 when they actually uh, came out with Android, and it was called the Open Handset Alliance. Um, oh, okay. And it was a bunch of companies, I said, went together to form this. Mm -hmm. um, Apple was not one of those. And so uh -huh. Apple came out with their own thing close to the same time, and, and that's when they came out with the iPad and the iPhone and, uh, using iOS. Uh, and they have kept their products proprietary, meaning they, they only sell their products. You can't, right. you can't buy a third-party phone that will run iOS. And, and Apple has always had that mm -hmm. marketing technology, yes. that marketing uh, uh, stance, uh, even from day one. Oh yes, back in the seventies or oh, the eighties, yes. they they just did they just did not share that information. All right, they keep it really really tight to them. Very close. Yeah. Whereas the the other system, uh, the Android system, was designed from the beginning to be like everybody has it. Yeah. You know, and the idea behind it is that uh, Motorola can come out with the phone, mm -hmm. Samsung can come out with the phone, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, LG, all these companies can come out with phones uh, or devices, mobile devices that will run the Android system. Uh -huh. and, uh, and that's what's happened. And that's why we have all these different ones. What hasn't happened is what I think the original intent was that they would have one Android system that would run on all these devices. And so each company essentially is coming out with their own, with their own, own version of it. Their own version. Right, and so that's why we see differences between the different phones or different uh -huh. tablets and stuff like that. But the, the, the basics between them all are the same. And a lot of the apps will run on multiples at the same time. That's why not everyone has, even though they claim to have, not everyone has a true 4G. That's right. Fourth generation. Right. And uh, and actually that's, um, uh, of course, the, you, know, you mentioned generation 4G, which is very fast, by the way. Uh, I have a 4G phone. Have you not? And uh, mine's through Verizon. I think uh, right. AT&T has uh, right. 4G here. Sprint, I think, has 4G here. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about others, but uh, it's, it's in Goldsboro area now. Um, but I tested mine to see the speed I was getting on 4G. This was when I first got the 4G phone, and I ran a speed test on it, and I got 27 megabits download and 17 megabits upload. Really? That's faster than what I have at my house. Yeah. That's matching the speed <laughs> of what I have at my office. That's and that's, on, and that's, that's on my phone. Right. Wow. Uh, funny story, I was down in, in Moorhead, um, uh, we went on that uh, history tour, uh, yeah. the Civil War history tour, and we stayed overnight down in Moorhead, and, uh, and I needed to upload th that video uh, back up here that I had taken during the day and I edited that night. Right. And I was going through the hotel's internet, and it was too slow. The video was going to take like eight hours to upload. Oh. So I reached and grabbed my phone, and yeah. I could tether into my, my computer, and put it, had it on 4G, and it uploaded in about 20 minutes. You know, wow. Difference in speed. Amazing, yeah. just amazing. So, bottom line is, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, Android or iOS, 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 iOS mm -hmm. uh -huh. and, uh, and as you mentioned, Apple has kind of held that close tight to themselves right. and proprietary. Uh, and, and the iPhone series is very popular. Yes. Um, it's not my choice, but my son loves it. You know, Brad. Brad loves the right. iPhone. He, he just got one. He got the iPhone five when it came out. He had. Oh, he's on that bleeding him. edge. Yeah. <laughs> I on, told him. I told him that. He's so, on the bleeding edge. He's on that bleeding edge. Gotcha. But they, um, uh, they, those systems work all work well. Yeah. Uh, and it just depends on what you want to get, what functionalities it has on the phone, uh, or the tablet, whatever you're getting. And uh, so, I, and I think we're going to see, see that. Uh, progress more. The Android, by the way, is still the more popular version. Mm -hmm. uh, it has still, the numbers of people that have Android devices still outweighs the, uh, the Apple. Do you see eventually iPhone. years down the road, and I don't see it myself, but you may, you're, you're the expert in this field, do you see the VHS beta 
syndrome happening to the Android and iOS where Android will eventually just take over? I, I think, I really don't think that's going to happen. I, I think that Apple is that strong. Apple is that strong. I think they will stick around. Uh, they have done it with the Macintosh over the years. Yeah. Um, and it's the people that, that love the Apple computers hate PCs. Yes. And a lot of people that have a PC get on an Apple computer, they, they what, what am I doing? Where's my right mouse button? You know, stuff like that. So. Well, one side is constantly saying, you know, they stole this software to start with. Yes. And copied mm -hmm. it. And, and, the and other that does side happen. And that does happen. Sure. No. But we don't talk about it. But I think we'll see, I, think, I still think we'll <laughs> see a dual system. Now, one thing that Apple did not too long ago on the computers, by the way, was to actually convert over from Motorola chips to Intel-based oh, chips. Okay. Uh, which personally, knowing the technology behind it, I think the Motorola were better processors. Yeah. But they did that, a lot of, a lot of reason they did that was for compatibility, because you can actually run a lot of the PC apps on the Apple computers now. And uh, mm -hmm. either, either directly, you can actually run Windows on some of them, or through an, an emulator. So. Okay. We are out of time. Okay. Uh, a lot of information to absorb there all at one time. Yeah, <laughs> Jim <laughs> Hennett's our guest today. We've been talking about, well, we talked about a lot of things, mm -hmm. but. Uh, uh, Jim, uh, you want to give out a phone number in case anyone wants to uh, yeah, they call, talk to you? Yeah, call or? my office at 919-735-8118. Right. 735-8118. Mm -hmm. Jim Hennett here uh, in the studio with us today. We appreciate you being with us. Glad to be here. And we'll have more from Jim in days to come here on WGTV. WGTV today. Thank you for being with us. And just a quick reminder, the 47th annual Pickle Classic Tournament and Homecoming is coming up this Friday, day after tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And that will begin at 5 p.m. and go until about 10 p.m. Advanced tickets are $15 for both days, $10 per day on, on game day. But uh, this is in Mount Olive and uh, celebrating 47 years of collegiate basketball at its best. The 47th mm -hmm. annual Pickle Classic Tournament and Homecoming that's at Mount Olive College. That's a big deal at Mount Olive College. It Has is. been for years. Yes, coming up this Friday evening. All right, That's and Saturday. Right. Let's see, we also have the Nutcracker is happening at the Paramount Theater Friday, November the 30th. Good. It'll happen all weekend. The cost is $12 for senior citizens, $15 for students. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pre presented by the Goldsboro Ballet, and you can get tickets at the Paramount Theater. Let's see, at 583 8432 is the phone number at the Paramount Theater. Get your tickets today. And you know, you could probably go online and get information as you well. You certainly can. GoldsboroParamount.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Now, tomorrow the 15th, we have guests with us, and in, 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 uh, tomorrow will be, oh boy, I take a bus ride tomorrow. Do you? On I the do, Gateway I Bus. I am so excited. Gateway Bus tomorrow, you will enjoy that. Uh, we also visit the Boys and Girls Club, or we'll hear from the Boys and Girls Club. From Anthony Tucci. Exactly, and Kevin Johnson of the uh, is the uh, is the agent, the Cooperative Extension Service agent. He's going to be with us tomorrow as well. All that's coming up. That's right. And let's leave you with a quote of the day. How about that, Wayne? Oh well, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Sounds good. When one door of happiness closes, another opens. But often we look so long at the closed door that we do not see the one that has been opened for us. How about that, Wayne? I like that. You like that? I like that. So we have to pay attention. We never know where we may find happiness. So pay attention. We'll be back tomorrow morning <laughs> at 7 o'clock here on WGTV today. And until then, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. And this is what's happening in your community.